church. Maybe some kind of fake or play church. Boy, wasn't it wonderful to see some people getting some help in this house here tonight. I was, I was, I was pleased to see some hearts getting help from God. Did everybody get help from God that needed it? You think there might be somebody else here that needs some help from God? I, I thought of the very first, I guess you could call it the very first church service on the day of Pentecost when the church was born. I mean, I know Jesus had died, the blood had been shed, but he told them to tarry in Jerusalem. And, and the Holy Ghost came by and 120 lives were changed, baptized with the Holy Ghost. My, wasn't that a wonderful thing to read about? Some people got some help, didn't they? But then, but then Peter preached. Most of the second chapter of Acts is, is about the sermon of Peter preaching. And after he preached, then a whole bunch of more people got some help. So I, I don't know. I just, I, I, it don't bother me to have a move of the Holy Ghost right in the beginning of the service. I, I, I rather like doing things the old time way. That's about as old time as you can get the day of Pentecost. Can I get a witness on that? I do feel like preaching. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 ho I hope you'll, I hope you'll stay with me here tonight, but. I, uh, I, I really was touched to see some people getting help here tonight, but I couldn't help but look across this congregation and wonder how many more still need some help in this house tonight. Do we have time to wait until somebody else can get something? I don't know why God has appointed it that way, but I see it often in the Scripture that sometimes faith cometh by hearing. That's every time. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing, and sometimes He wants to boost our faith so I want you to lift your hands here tonight and ask God just to have his way in, in the remaining part of this meeting. Would you do it? Father, I thank you so much for what you've said and done here already tonight. Oh, God, I'm asking you for help and for the grace of God. Meet with us in this house. Have your way. Get yourself honor. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. I want you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 5. Thank you for the, for the nice accommodations, Brother Randy, King Mountain Church, the fellowship. Appreciate Brother Mike Roberts and Brother John, the folks coming over from their church here tonight. I love fellowship, don't you? One old fellow said, the more fellows in the ship, the more fellowship. So that's great here tonight. We're glad for everybody that's here, every one of you. Uh, John, chapter 5 tonight, if you'll... Look, I begin reading in verse 1. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I pray that you'll help our ears to hear and our hearts to receive it. In Jesus' name we ask. And everybody said amen. amen. After this, verse 1, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years, and when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had now been a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. I want to preach to you if the Lord would... Stand by me. I remember to say it, Brother Randy. If you'll stand by me here tonight, I want to preach to you for just a little while about troubled waters. It's mentioned three times in this passage, troubled waters, where this angel comes down and troubles these waters. What an unusual way 
for heaven to touch earth. To come down and cause a ripple. Come down and make some waves. These waters lie here tranquil and still. An occasional breeze might cause them to ripple. Some storm that would arise would certainly make a wave on these waters like any other waters. But this event that this chapter is talking about is not the occasional breeze. It's not the storm of natural sources that would move the surface of the water. No, this event is no natural source here. Heaven dispatches an angel. And at the descent of this heavenly messenger, this pool is troubled as he touches the surface of this water. The only difference here is heaven orchestrates this trouble and heaven gets everyone's attention and heaven heals somebody in the process. Oh, when heaven troubles the waters, you can be sure, brothers and sisters, something good is in store. You just got to hang on here just a little while. Heaven will usually give you something for your trouble. I'm telling you now, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Let me give you something for your trouble. Is what he began to do next. Let not your heart be troubled. And he went on and he gave them, amen, something for the trouble that he had just caused them because his words troubled them. He was talking about going away. They didn't understand the Jewish prophecies like we understand some of them today. Jesus came and they were looking for a Messiah to come. But they never grasped the concept that he would come and leave and come again. That's why so many of his parables talked about a king that would leave and come again. Or a ruler that would leave and come again. Or a Samaritan that would rescue you and leave you in an inn and go away and come back again. He was preparing their heart. And now he's talking plainly to them. And their heart is troubled because they're just getting to know him. And he's talking about going away. I wish I could preach to you here tonight. But he gives them something for this trouble that they're feeling in their heart. He gives them someone to believe in. You believe in God, believe also in me. He gives them something else to believe in. A promise in his word. Hallelujah. I go to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. If it were not so, I would have told you. In my father's house are many mansions. I've got a place for you and I'm going to come back again to receive you to myself something to look forward to oh yeah heaven will do that for you it'll give you something for your trouble but I feel like there's some troubled hearts in this house here tonight really that doesn't take a lot of spirituality to figure that out I don't want to sound cliched I don't want to sound generic. But I'm preaching to you about this because this is what I felt the Lord touch my heart to talk to you about in this house tonight. Troubled waters. I feel like we've got some souls that are in trouble here tonight. Oh, I need you to help me preach. I really do. Oh, God. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me talk to you here. Let me talk to you here about the making of our trouble. Trouble is something that we all face in life, and there's many different sources that are behind our trouble. Of course, the devil is a troublemaker. I hate to state the obvious, but I think sometimes we forget that fact. He is a troublemaker. 
Job said in, in his writings, Job 14 and 1, in the book named after him, he said, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He actually thought that his troubles came from the Lord. And I suppose there was a messenger that told him of some of the tragedies that befell his property that may have been an instrument of the devil to start leading him astray when he came in and said the fire from God fell down out of heaven and destroyed all your cattle here Job let me tell you something that fire came down out of the sky but that fire wasn't from God that fire was from the devil I love Job's faith in the midst of his trouble even though he didn't understand. He said, though God slay me, God wasn't trying to slay him. The only reason he was still alive was because God refused to let the devil kill him. But he said, though God slay me, yet I'll trust him. See, Job, Job never had the benefit of reading the book of Job. He would have done a whole lot better even if he had just had the first two chapters, he'd have known what was going on. But he didn't know what was going on, but he knew his God, and he knew his Redeemer lived, and he knew he'd see God in his flesh one day. There was a lot he did not understand, but in the midst of all his trouble, he still trusted God, but it was the devil that brought his trouble. He's still a troublemaker. Very often our trouble is made by our very own hand. Human nature wants to blame somebody else. You remember when Elijah appears before Ahab after all of the drought and the famine and Ahab says, there's the guy that troubles Israel. I love Elijah's courage. He points right back at him and says, no, you're the fellow that's troubling Israel. But human nature likes to put the blame on somebody else. I've seen the smokescreen syndrome from people. You find somebody that's constantly, constantly, constantly pointing their finger at somebody else. I've lived long enough to figure out they might be trying to hide something at home and keep all the eyes looking in a different direction. Are you going to help me preach here tonight? Amen. Sometimes the devil has caused our trouble. Sometimes we brought it on ourselves. Sometimes it's a combination of both things amen but I'm here to tell you no matter what the source of our trouble is that the Lord is still the master of all the trouble that this human race has ever seen the Lord is not afraid of trouble You ever walk into a crowded room and laughter goes on? Everybody looks and they want to be part of it. You walk into a crowded room and sorrow and weeping is going on. Some people start ducking their head and looking for the nearest exit sign to get away. But my Jesus is a man of sorrow. And acquainted with grief. So much so that we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Oh, hallelujah. He's not afraid of trouble. He'll get right down in your trouble with you. Oh, hallelujah. If you've ever been in trouble, you appreciate the fact that when trouble comes up, the Lord is not a fair weather friend. In fact, a man. And he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And he is a very present help in time of trouble. It's almost like he gets a little closer to us when trouble comes our way. He doesn't get farther, but he draws closer. I kind of believe he'd like to get right down inside of us and ride the storm out in your life and in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the 
the master of it. I said, he's the master of it. He'll ride through it with you. And he'll take control. Oh, yeah. That storm on the Sea of Galilee. A storm is certainly troubled waters. Very troubled waters. But he can get a hold of it. And harness it. And somehow he can bring good out of it. Good that brings glory to his name. This awful storm that was designed to blow the faith right out of the hearts of the disciples. I know that because of what Jesus said to them. Where's your faith? Hello? But when it was all said and done, they said, what manner of man is this that the winds and the seas obey him? What was designed to destroy their faith when he stood up in the middle of it and got a hold of it, all of a sudden enlightened their eyes and brought in their heart and filled them with a greater understanding. Who is this? Who is this? What kind of man is this that when he talks, the winds listen and the waves lay still? Glory be to God. He's got it all under control. He can bring good out of you in the storm and the trouble. Peter, in one of those storms, got inspired and went overboard and walked on water. How come we focus all of our attention on that one phrase and he beginning to sink and all of us comfortable boat riders Just wear Simon Peter out. He sunk. He did not sink. He began to sink. He never finished sinking. You know, when when I've tried to stand on water, it was a very brief millisecond. In fact, it was so brief that I can't really fathom in my mind what it even felt like. I didn't begin to sink. I began and ended to sink so quickly together that there's no division between the beginning, the middle, and the ending of my sinking sensation. So I don't really know what was going on if Peter was slowly getting down to his ankles and then up to his knees and then he began to realize, hey, I'm not on top of it like I was just a minute ago. I'm starting to sink and he cried out and Jesus got a hold of his hand and he walked on water back in the boat can I get a witness that didn't end in defeat it ended in victory can the church say amen out of that star God gave him an experience that he never forgot and we're still talking about it today all in the trouble he can bring you out of the trouble you've caused with your own hands Are you hearing me here? I talked to you last night about Samson at Gaza. If you get to thinking about it, there's a lot of situations in Samson's life where his trouble was caused by his own hand. He really shouldn't have been in that vineyard when that line roared against him. He shouldn't have been in Gaza doing what he was doing when they closed those gates. And it wasn't God's intention for him to be bound and grinding at the mill. But one thing I will say for Samson, he did learn how to call on God in the middle of his trouble. And God was faithful enough to do to him just like he did the nation of Israel time and again to meet him in the middle of the trouble that he caused with his own hand and bring him out of it. There's no trouble regardless of the source regardless of the depth of it that he can't help you with. You're wishing you'd have shouted now. I'm kind of wishing you would have too.
because I really felt like talking to you about this. And I'm feeling right now like I felt like talking more than you feel like listening right now. Oh, Lord, help us. Lift your hands right now and ask God to help us here. God has a ministry in trouble. How many people are on their way to heaven today because of trouble that came their way? What about the thief on the cross? Right there. In his dying hour, in trouble he couldn't do anything about, right there was Jesus. And a simple prayer and a heart full of faith. Do you know that thief did everything a man ought to do in order to get saved while he hung on that cross? He confessed, amen, to that other thief and everybody else that was listening in the, in the ears of the Lord. This man is not worthy, but we're worthy to be here. He confessed his sins. Can I hear an amen? He had faith in Jesus Christ. What about look into a man who's dying on a Roman cross and say, when you are come into your kingdom. Did he look like he was going into a kingdom to anybody else? Not even the disciples thought he was going into a kingdom. But something got a heart of this troubled man who was in the trouble of dying. And somehow he looked at a bloody, beaten, dying Savior and realized this was not the end. This was the beginning. This was not a thief who was dying or a criminal who was dying. This was a king, a about to be crowned. And he said, when you come in your kingdom, remember me. He repented. He, he had been cursing the Lord. And now he's blessing the Lord. Now he's confessing the Lord. Hallelujah. He has changed his ways. And Jesus said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh. What's your trouble today? I said, what's your trouble today? We got a young man who just left the Bond Church with his new bride. And they're expecting their first baby. They just went on the mission field in Honduras. And Brother Jacob Bond was here. He'd tell you about all the trouble that came up in his life. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he doesn't, he doesn't curse the day. He blesses the day. Because in the midst of all that trouble, it drove him to the master. Oh, hallelujah. I'm really trying. I don't feel like I'm connecting right now. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 107. You know the chapter. Verse 23. These that go down to the sea in great ships that do business in great waters these see the works of the Lord and his wanders in the deep. For he commandeth. Oh, hallelujah. He commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted. Because of trouble. They reel to 
and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distress. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet and he bringeth them to their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. In. Their soul is melted. They're at their wit's end. Up they go and down they go. Up they go and down they go. Staggering backward and forward. And all of a sudden they remember there's a God who cares about me. And they get their bearing in a whirlwind and they cry out in their trouble. You ever try to pray in the midst of a whirlwind? Hallelujah! But God has his way in the whirlwind. And he meets them in their trouble. And he brings them out. I don't want to leave you in your trouble. This man had been 38 years in this shape. And the only thing that he could think of that gave him any hope at all to get out of the trouble he was already in was a little more trouble. Every time the waters was troubled, no one was there. It seemed like his trouble was compounded. Even when it looked like the finger of heaven that troubled the waters, he couldn't seem to get in to the heavenly trouble, to get out of the trouble he was in. What a disaster. And here comes Jesus. I, I, I think of all the people laying at the pool that day. I think of all the trouble that was in that place. But this man, 38 years, had been in this case. And Jesus walks right into the midst of it all. And he looks at that man, 38 years, had been laying here. And he says, wilt thou be made whole. Lord, Lord, I, I, I have no man to help me when the waters are troubled. That's not what he's asking here. Do you have a helper? Are you ready for an angel? We don't need an angel today. We don't need any more trouble today. The one who solves all the trouble has walked into your presence here and he has a question for you. Will thou be made whole? Hey, I'm here to spare you from any more trouble. I'm here to pick you up. Rise. Take up thy bed and walk says the Lord. Are you in trouble in your body tonight? Man, Brother Chaney, where are you at? You got through preaching today. I felt like going and praying for somebody that was sick. That helped my faith this morning. You in trouble in your body tonight? You in trouble in your home tonight? You got church trouble tonight? What's your trouble tonight? Trouble with your faith tonight?
I really believe the Lord wants to come by here tonight and help somebody get up out of the trouble you're in and spare you from some trouble that's coming. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. Stand with me all across this house tonight. Some of you were pressing in tonight. And while I was thrilled for you, I felt a burden for some mothers who were holding back. I can't help you get into nothing. I'll do everything I can. But the question is not who's going to help me get in. That ain't the question tonight. The question is, wilt thou? Wilt thou? Oh, God. Preacher, you're telling me to do something I can't do. No, 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 no. The same Jesus that walked into the pool of Bethesda where those five porches were and looked at a man that hadn't walked in 38 years and said, get up, rise, take up thy bed and walk. That same Jesus is here tonight to help you in your trouble. The question is, will you get up to meet him? Oh, I wish I could help you tonight. Lift your hands all across this house and ask God to help somebody. Oh, come on, let's worship God in the house tonight. The Holy Ghost has already come by here and helped some people. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I said the Holy Ghost has already come by here and helped some people. Why, oh, why, oh, why? I wish that little woman that touched the hem of his garment would have been at that pool that day. They probably could have started a revival at the pool of Bethesda if somebody would have followed suit and got a hold of the Son of God. Can I get a witness in this house? Will you? Will you? I said, will you? I said, well, yeah. I don't, I don't know how many years Sister Pittman, Brother Pittman told me this two or three times this year already. I don't know how many years she had suffered with the condition in her eyes. And she was 30 years and she went to the Allentown camp meeting this year. I wasn't even there. But somebody was preaching and while they were preaching, someone had said something about if you feel like coming to this altar, move out. And she felt like getting prayed for right then and said, I feel like getting prayed for. And he got a hold of her and led her up there to the altar and they, they, they stopped everything and prayed for her. And after 30 years, God healed her eyes. I talked to him on the phone today and he still rejoiced over the miracle that God gave her in her upper 70s. Hey, God still heals you when you're in your upper 70s. Can I hear an amen? I'm getting ready to go. Lord willing, I'm getting ready to go preach down there in Brazil where you preached. Brother Burkett, Brother Turner, Brother Rusty, Brother Zang. Brother Mike Johnson, 
Lord willing, the Lord tears. In July, Brother Burkett's going. Yeah, he was on. He was on, on the hospice bed, with four stage cancer. And he told Brother Turner, Brother Turner told me at Richlands, he told Brother Turner, my preaching days are over. It's done. He's 90 years old. My preaching's over. I finished my course. And old Brother Sebastio down there, was he 86, 87 years old, down there in Brazil, started, started getting up at, at, at 4 o'clock every morning and praying for him. Oh, hallelujah. Are you helping me here tonight? And all of a sudden, he just started feeling better and getting better. And Brother Turner told me at Richlands Camp Meeting, he said, he's at hospice, he's still in hospice care, and they still come by and check on him if they can find him at home. Ah, 90 years old, and he's, hey, 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 I'm talking to you here tonight. I feel like the Lord wants to help somebody in their trouble. Are you having trouble in your home? The Lord sees that he's come by King Mountain tonight. Are you having trouble in your body? He was already up here around the altar here tonight. Why don't somebody let him help you in your trouble? Thank you. 